Hello, this is Hacker to Bean, and today we are going to be tumbling yet again. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Sorry, I had to get something off the screen. Anyway, let's get right into this. I think the best, most human thing in the world is strangers doing a silly thing together. Examples! Guys at, at work, yes, and in, in the bit me and my coworker were doing and when we pretend to be owners of a fantasy medieval tavern, not in a way retail staff. At the gate club, when Dai Young, my catcher, comes on and 200 people all, all dancing and drinking separately, jumped up and down to make, make the beat the drum stomp, stomp as loud as possible. A person who watched me stomp around the beach singing a made-up song about breakfast foods is to name a cat after and suggest more breakfast foods that would be a good that would be good cat names. Let's see how it is. Guy who saw a dance off with everyone across the road while waiting for the lights to change. Very tiny girl at the e pharmacy interviewing everyone in the queue, and every single one of us, us in turn, sat down and answered earned this childless questions like we were on Letterman. The three pillars of humanity, no particular or order, or joy, absurdity, and sharing. Very true. Sorry for that pause. I was having problems with my charger again. <laughs> the big dipper as it is today left and as it will look in 50,000 years dream of stars 1940 squashed my spoon <laughs> rest in peace big spoon oh my goodness Will I be able to read all of this? Find out when the freaking thing loads. Holy heck. I have an essay ringing in my head constantly about lawns. Which, well, unsurprising since I post about how I hate lawns all the time, but I think the lawn and landscaping centered way of thinking about places outside it's a bigger thing that connects to other things. What is it? Having ideas about concepts is always like this. I would introduce my ideas by a situation where they, they apply. Sometimes life forms mimic other life forms. One form of mimicry is called Vavilovian mimicry, where weed species and crops grown by humans evolve over time to be more similar to the crops. A low in mimicry basically helps weeds survive because the weeds are adapted to the caretaking regimen of the crops and because the human caretakers of the crops can have a hard time telling them apart. Which means they might say, eh, I'll wait until it grows up so I can be sure I'm not pulling up my crop. Not to mention that all your grass is actually weeds. I think there's something similar at work among flower gardens and landscaping, but it's different. Most people don't know the name of every plant they might possibly grow in their flower beds, and they often follow plants that they don't know just because, some, uh, just because they don't know them. They sometimes look, say they pull up a plant that looks weedy or looks like a weed. I think to myself, what does a weedy look like? This question uh, collided unexpectedly in my brain was an insight that I had about an invasive species that I could not explain. I have to get rid of 
a lot of calorie pear, a winter creeper, honeysuckle, burning bush, private, English ivy, and our plants are invasive where I live. And strangely, many invasive plants look similar in ways that don't share with many native species. They tend to have small, round, or squat, glossy leaves, and they, they tend to have a very dense growth habit. I think and think of several possible explanations. Maybe these species thrive in North America because of the loss of controlled burning, but the characteristics look so distinct next to native species because they relate to things that would make a species fire intolerant. This doesn't seem quite right since it has a protected level of fire adaptiveness in native species. Another explanation is better. They were selected for these traits by humans for their usefulness in landscaping. Dense growth habit would be useful for creating hedges or ground covers. This is why many invasive species were originally planted, right? And small leaves might feel or be perceived as less messy when they fall. But I think this is a clue to something else going on. What does weedy look like? Some plants go on one side of weed versus flower. And on the, and some on the other, it is almost totally arbitrary. How do these gardeners make the call so decisively? I think about the commonest as landscaping plants: knockout roses, hostas, petunias, begonias, boxwoods, and so on. They share a lot of the characteristics mentioned above: shining or at least smooth, typically small and squat leaves, dense and compact growth habit. Then I think about some of the commonest and most important weedy native flowers, such as golden and rods, asters, milkweeds, joe pie weed, ironweed, and sunflower. They all differ from the above in at least one striking way. Mostly, they have hairy leaves and stems, long and thin leaves, and a tendency to grow up tall before blooming. Milkweed has smooth leaves, but its leaves are long and very big. Hmm. I think I can guess where this is coming from. Landscaping and garden design and often look like this. Oh gosh, they have floor maps. You know what? When I I came on to when I came to with Tumblr today. I was not expecting to be dragged into lawns and plant stuff. Anyway, see how the plants are drawn and up and arranged to cover a space in two dimensions, mostly not overlapping with each other? This is very easy to plan and design, and those common landscaping plants I mentioned, also as knockout roses, boxwoods, and so on, are very good at acting like a two-dimensional representation. And of them does. Just look, you can see them. Huh, so they can. I'm not reading these pictures. You can't pay me enough to do that. <laughs> Look at the these, those important native wildflowers I mentioned. Goldenrod. Ironweed. Milkweed. These guys don't fill up much space in a horizontal plane. They go straight up. They don't exclude other plants from very much space either. Plants could grow under them and among them. So they're not very good for filling up space, and their opener, lengthier or less dense shape doesn't do a good job at blocking other plants from growing. In a garden of North American prairie or meadow adapted plants, the plants wouldn't exclude each other and stay within their designated spots because they're evolved to intermix with a great variety of plants. Very true. Ooh, pretty. Separateness is a big part of the typical landscape aesthetic. These plants look very neatly separate from each other. This is what looks neat and well kept to us, the opposite of weedy. This could mean our gardens and flower beds are affected by a selective pressure, a lot like the Avilovian mercury situation. But instead of weeds being selected to look like intentionally grown plants, The intentionally grown plants are being selected to look different from weeds. The so difference makes perfect sense. In a field, the rule is leave the plant there if you're unsure or because that's your food. 
and a flower bed is get rid of the a plant if you're unsure because having weeds is more aesthetically unacceptable than having blank space. The point is, uh, ecology needs to be a big part of in landscaping because you are doing ecology. If you don't know the evolutionary principles, you're acting them out. Just like the inevitable, in inevitable preferences of human birds give the milk. Those weird elaborate display structures and of all the sex senses that govern our built of the world slowly turning into something weird. I I just read a huge essay about gardening and landscaping. Two things that I do not have the slightest interest in. Bohemian Rhapsody, We Will Rock You, Somebody to Love, all hit singles, and all the direct product of a band that was formed when an astrophysicist and a, and a history major found a new friend in co art college, who then went on to recruit a fourth member from the electronic school. Based on this alliance, I proposed a rift in society between arts and STEM students was fabricated to keep, keep us separated, so it was to dilute our true power and fabricate by who, you may ask? The business major, the only member of society who reaps no reward from art and science and thus must weaken us as to say, so as to say ahead. In this essay, I will. Where's the SAOP? Where's the SAOP? Thank oh, goodness. Not another one. Can't wait until at least. Looks like Tumblr wants me to do a lot of reading today. If Cthulhu can be summoned by humans who are so far beneath it, why can't humans be summoned by ants? The answer is they should be. Well, I'll have a bunch of ants formed a circle in my house. I certainly noticed driving out where they'd all come from and possibly wreak destruction there. So I know I can correctly pronounce the true name is so important to the ritual. Imagine how possible it would be not to go or take a look, look if the circle of ants started chanting your name. And you're like, you can't leave because we made, we drew a line and made of tiny crystals. Now you have to do us a favor. And you're like, let's just see where this goes. Yep, you got me. What's the favor? And usually the favor is like, kill this one ant for us. Or give me a pile of sugar. And you're like, okay. And you do, because why not? This is hard for you and boy. Or is this go going to be a freaking story to tell? These freaking ants chant a good name wanting a spoonful of sugar or whatever. And sometimes you get asked for things you can't really do. Like one of them, she's like, I love this ant, but she won't pay any attention to me. It'd be important to her. And you're like, um, how? So you just kill every ant and call it except the two of them. Ta-da! Problem solved. And the first ant is like... Horrified whisper, what have I done? For some reason my friend won't let go of this one, so meanwhile another cow and an ant invades your house. Evidently that last ant has gone some of them to join her in a circle and taunt the and the ritual. But because you're coming out of the bathroom one day and you hear the ant singing your name. Sure enough, it's the ant. But she's dark and fucked up now. And she's like, Kill the queen. I will rule this colony. And like, sure, I guess I kind of owe her, and you do it. And she manages to become queen, and they worship you, which is cool. You're not, you know, very important in the human world, but to these ants, you're practically all powerful. You can't be just doing everything a bunch of ants tell you, though. Oh, when we watch Netflix, so you tend to only show up for super important ants. You teach them extra words, 
And when and you hit him, you go see what's up. Usually. Also, just say your name. If you're bored, and since I have some of the answer, like, tell us more human names, you're kind of jealous of the idea of other humans eluding your private goodhood, godhood, for so you refuse. Your roommate, Greg, is like, yo, that's freaking awesome, I want ant worshippers. Whatever you approach, and he's, they run away, because it turns out the illusion of control from the name summoning is what makes him feel safe around you. That's great because Greg is a dick who never does the dishes, and one day you decide to teach Greg a lesson. So you throw up at the colony, and you're like, Yo, witch queen, did you think there would be no price for all these things? Your calling must do something for me. Go to the room of the housemate. I will meet you there. You go sit, in, you, you sit on the couch and play Overwatch for a while. You're like, Right there, you can clearly see the ants all marching along the wall to Greg's room. But to them, you're not even there. You're so far away, they can't see you. This is like an ant week to make the journey. They have to figure out ways to get an over and around things. Some of them have drowned or get stopped by the dog or whatever. You win a game, you lose a game, you look over and they're trying to get through some cobwebs. Looks like they're going most, mostly going to live. You keep playing, you look over, look at they're all in there. And you stand up and walk over by the time they've chanted your name once. You're there. Right, hold on. And look around and you see a 12 pack of Greg's precious freaking saw that he keeps in his room and refuses to ever share. Even though it's communal food household and you share your hot chocolate with them all the time. So you gather the ants onto you and you poke oak a little hole in each of the sodas and you leave the room to the sound of ants rejoicing. Greg will suspect, of course, but he'll never be able to prove the ants didn't chew holes in a plastic and steal his stupid drinks. But later, while you're at work, Greg destroys most of the colony in a rage, and you come home to find the witch queen gasping her last breath. The dew of the mountain, which you had a steal, was cursed, and so I lay my curse on you. And then she dies. Well, first of all, you don't really believe in curses, but last month you didn't believe even ants could know your name, so that's unsettling. And second of all, you feel kind of bad. You know, not super bad because she's like an ant, but still. And most importantly, third of all, Greg must pay. But Greg has done more than to kill a bunch of the colony at, as you wait for eggs and to replenish the ant population. You discover he has found some ants that didn't go on the mountain do right. And then he spared them, told them his name, and made himself a, a good sized cult. And you're fucking ant queen them! Greg has started locking his doors so that you need the ants. Once again, you direct the ants loyal to you to join his Greg X room. You meet them at the door. A locked door means nothing to the ants. They don't know there is a door. You can barely perceive the difference between it being open and shut. Either passing the threshold on the floor or regardless, or being on its surface, no matter or the position. But you need to get inside. You're going to put itching powder in his underwear and leave a raw fish under his bed. So instruct the leading party bands how to go into the cave with the keyhole and position the magic megalits inside. I just write to enable the opening of the great door and allow you to pass into the realm of Hathel's mate. Crouched by the door, you can hear when your ants are met by a party of Greg cultists, who insists that if the great door is open, your colony will be doomed. There is fighting. Your ants prevail. The lock tumbles. Umbler's are moved into place and you swing the door open. To find Greg in his room all along. It's a trap. His cultists attack you. I mean, they can't do much real harm, but it kind of hurts and it's super annoying. You're your or attack your ants to attack him, and they do. They storms over and pours bleach down the colony entrance.
Now you and Greg are at war, and you both understand the unspoken rules for your fight. You can't do things directly to each other, or, or why that would be assault. But everything you can get your aunt to do is fine. Because she's all the aunt to do it for me isn't going to get very far with any authority figures that get involved. Later, nursing your anger, you confer with your few remaining ants and stare moodily at your new prize, the iron farm that came in the mail. Both ants don't usually get along with your ants, but you're betting they will if a god tells them to. Meanwhile, you've got a laptop schematic to go over with your high priestess. It's finals week, and if you time it right, you'll lose everything. <laughs> Feel free to add your own stories paralleling human slash other world lay with insect slash human interactions. I'm going to have this reposted a few times because I want to see which of my mutuals are into this kind of thing because I'm preparing a test drive, a test drive of fiction share and writing prompt project. <clears throat> The idea of the old gods obeying us, not because of supernatural reason, but because I think it's funny to watch a tiny animals fight, is the answer to everything. He would baffle that a bunch of ants inexplicably calling it by name is a better characterization for the Eldritch Abomination than 90% of Eldritch Abomination ends in fiction. Absolutely. That is so real. Wait. Don't worry, we only have a few more left. Any setting where the elves have weaker boosts than the dwarves isn't committing to the bit. I mean, we're talking about who, people whose lifespan is yes. Oh, the weak wine? That is for children. I am 2,000 years old, and I dare say one sip from this highball would knock you on your ass for a week. Look, there's this weird thing people do with high fantasy where they want elves to be immortal, extremely long-lived, snooty aristocrats, and also somehow incapacitated by matching the taste of salt too hard. Orcs and dwarves have the hardest booze. No, they don't. They have work in the morning. In any of these settings, elves will throw the game harder than Harvest Party, yeah, and everyone else has shit to do tomorrow. Not to mention, um... If orcs and, and dwarves had a good outlet for their fucking for their er, anger and rage, then they wouldn't be known for being so angry and rageful. And also, dwarves would not be able to be such great smiths if they were always drunk. The average high elf builds up the drug tolerance of a mid a mid seventy is producer, and then spends three centuries studying alchemy. alchemy. While humans seek immortality, the immortals seek the elusive philosopher's cocaine. Elf fentanyl or works exactly the way cops think human fentanyl does. <sighs> <clears throat> I took a mythology class once and the professor thought it was really important for us to understand that the wine the ancient Greeks named the that Anissus is the god of was not conventional grape wine. There were all kinds of medical herbs, medicinal herbs in there. That shit was hallucinogenic. You were definitely a trip when you drank it. We are getting some good world building here. Ooh, this is gonna be another long one. 
Looks like a lot of these are going to be long ones that require me to go to another tab. Isn't that fun? Oh, you're invincible, you say? Easily evinces you. Oh, you're unlovable, you say? Easily loves you. I'm saying this post going around because there are only two reactions. One, people who have seen the above edition being emotional. Two, people who have been trying to fight eight ball wizard to the death. <laughs> Don't forget the very important third reaction. Three people named Vince. Oh my goodness. Oh, you're inconceivable, you say. Easily. He conceives you. Why don't you ever call your mother on her birthday? Sorry, my follower added that comment to your post. <laughs> No, nah, dog, nah, I thought it was funny. Tumblr is something else. The fact that this is such a discussion is unreal. If you were born female, you have, have reproductive organs. If you were born male, you don't. How hard is that? Howley is correct. Only women have re reproductive organs. Men don't. Women have a pelvis. Men do not. Plain and simple. What the fuck are men? <laughs> Men do not have a pelvis. That is just science, you godless liberal. Maybe we should be reblogging this version because I think it's terrible that men just sort of trill off down there. What the heck? This is purely because. A lot of people don't know that male genitalia, which is is their bits down there, are reproductive organs. And the reason why getting, getting kicked in the nuts hurts so badly is because that is an organ getting fucking bruised. That's why it hurts so deeply and so horribly. The historical figure, the fan art, early birth of Alexander the Great by Iliopiphus, possibly made from life. Later, Roman copy of Alexander the Great, but centuries after his death. Oh my goodness, they made him way, way more uh, beautiful. Yasification is just human nature, apparently. Pretty much. We exist to yasify. Me. Oh wow, this shop, this shop has everything my heart desires. Spooky shopkeeper. Yes, I will warn you. Every item comes with a price. Yes, I know how shops work. The price will be more than you expect to pay. Yes, I know how U.S. taxes work too. This is shopkeeper increasingly exasperated. I'm trying to tell you that I'm evil and offering these wares with no re regard for the harm they will do. Me also increasing needs as well. I know what capitalism is too. Damn. So they're finally here, performing for you. Oh my goodness, it's a Bogler band. I wish there was an equivalent to the bitch you live like this image before boring minimalist spaces. I gotta I don't know I do Goopy's voice, but bitch you live like this? Yeah. I love the time of year when I wake up and it's hella foggy, like who the frick turned down my render distance? Literally when it's foggy outside, I look out my window and it's like, oh my goodness, there's a void. 
the Reddit is it's, it's like zero right now. It's gone. <sighs> Why did you just do this to me? Damn, God, you really need to see a dentist. <laughs> Anyway, so I feel like the Western obsession with romantic love is symptomatic of the absence of community we experience in our socially isolating in society. It's the only type of love we're really allowed to have, and it's really sad. Everyone realizes at some point that you don't need to be dating someone to love them, and that you don't need any romance just to be loved. It's harmful in so many ways. It's harmful and isolating to people who don't experience romantic love. It's harmful to people who, for any reason, can't be in a romantic relationship. It minimizes the importance of other forms of love and trivializes not romantic relationships. Finally, it harms people who are actually in romantic relationships and it's saying the message that your part that your romantic partner should be the only person to fulfill all your emotional needs and vice versa. <sighs> Shepard's first conversation with the crew after she gains command of the Normandy SR1 are hilarious. Shepard. Hey, so all of these conversations ends up going horribly. My XO and gunnery chief are xenophobic. My lieutenant has a, a cross rush on me. I was richly insensitive to Rex. My pilot is an absorbent and little shit. Please tell me you're chill. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about me. Good, tell me about yourself. Why'd you join up? CSAC, it wouldn't let me kill or abuse criminals. Spectres don't have any red tape, so I'm here to do things my way. Oh, for the love of God! <clears throat> God, Emperor of Dune is probably one of the greatest science fiction books I've ever read. It's full of profound philosophical questions that remain relevant to this day. Such as, would you love me if I were a worm? God dang it! Everywhere! Do I have to? I might have to. I am eventually going to start skipping these. Sheesh, why are there so many pictures? Oh, dang it. I'll see the first one. It might just be all the other ones just put together. Let's see. He's 40 years old. He's baby girl. He's unhinged. He's creating problems for himself and everyone else. He's God's favorite punching bag. He's a whore. He's pathetic. He's my poor little meow, ow, meow. To be honest, the most honorable thing a man could do is serve God and wear one single earring. Forgive me, Father, for I have sexualized an older man. Vibe check. Burst into tears. Oh my goodness. You had a rest for being so darn cute. Huh? Just as joking. We know you killed that man. Please stop setting yourself on fire. Grow up! <laughs> they are approximately 1 million and, and 30,913 words in the English language, but I, I could never string any of them together to explain how much I want to hit you with a chair. You all only hate me because you do not like me, and I am mean to you. Grow up. <laughs> this has a great saying, it has random Tumblr quotes because I love the hell out of a game.
No, let's see. Is this actually different? Oh no, it is. Not. It is actually exactly the same. That is a little bit at this point thing, but kind of a relief. Guys, please, I'm a Twitter migrant. What happened with that old dog sanctuary vlog? Like, please educate me. So there's a dog chatter for senior dogs called Old, old Friends Senior Dog Sanctuary. They had a couple of old social media pages, among them a Tumblr page. They repost posts from their Facebook about the different dogs in the shelter. Very cute stuff. This goes on for months. It gets popular because people love dogs. But then a dog entirely out of the blue posts. I just want to get dick down again. And it never posts again. Everyone in involved was like, hey, what the fuck? They mentioned this Facebook page and they were like, hey, is the person running your Tumblr page okay? They've been acting real weird. And the person running the Facebook page was like, huh? We don't have a Tumblr page. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I just imagined Roman mythology like a bunch of Demon Arts original characters. And here's my OC Mars. Isn't that Ares? No, he's completely original. See, his name is Mars. You just mirrored Ares, changed your hair color, and Mars is my original character. Do not steal. My goodness, Rome. <laughs> How secure is your premises? How secure is your penises? <laughs> Tumblr. There are three breeds of cat. Chunk, Goblin. Yeah, that looks like a cat. There's th subcategories of breeds. Bloof, Naked, Normal. Oh my goodness, here we go. It's really weird because, like, the naked ones all look kind of like goblins to me. I don't know. I do not like the hairless cats. Oh my goodness. They are all so cute. Simon so tasty, it makes me hasty. He says that someone is finished when it's finished, the joy is diminished. Wow. <laughs> taxi for fun. Aww, a taxi for fun. Me to my girlfriend. I will bite you. Please do. A taxi with the express intention to maim and kill you. Yeah, that's my reaction to Puka Joe. Thank you. I'm going to tell you that Barbie, he's, that babies come from people. This is a lie. Wait for you in the lab. Dad built old in the cross space back in that old house. You have Hornet DNA. My little brother loves Gravity Falls. As a gift, I bought him a little pocket journal and filled with notes and invisible ink. Gravity Falls was a really good show. I support women in STEM. Scary experiments, time loops, existential dilemmas, and madness. Well, how about STEAM, where the A is for agony? I'm a woman in STEM then. Maybe. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I'm a gay person. What about it? Shows you a little bouncy ball from my pocket with a giant bite taken out of it. 
That's grand, butthole. Dr. House. I think that's called a hospital. I think so too, yes. And if you're referring to the doctor, no. Just no. <laughs> Bussy means not erotic, kiss, mostly on cheek, in southern dialects of German speaking area slash land. For example, Bussy Bussy could be a way of saying goodbye, kiss kiss. Dick and Bussy is, in fact, a normal phrase, but it means a big kiss. The amount of years I spent around a femboys really ruins that word for me. I will not elaborate. <laughs> this might get funny, it might get bad, who knows. Pages in category anti-fascist. Sonic the Hedgehog, Luke Skywalker, Akira Kurusu, Optimus Prime, the leaders of Antifa. I'm unreasonably angry at this Jiffos trying to pass Optimus Prime at Optimus as Antifa. Like he is the most the most centralist liberal I've ever seen in my life. I listen. <laughs> Fuck your big fuck off text ex post. I'm small maxing. The less space a post takes up, the more of me there is on your screen. I'm like ants and shit. Oh jeez, I can't read that. Here, let me. Oh, are those ants and shit? Love that. The premise of Skyrim is just so funny. The shouts are just dragon language, making the fights between the dragons basically an argument, but now this human now this puny human has a minimal grasp of vocab. Imagine you're disagreeing with your butt about something unimportant like pineapple and pizza, then Mouse comes running over and calls you a bitch. You laugh, but Mouse came ran up to me with a toothpick in hand and yelled, Oh the bitch, can't fuck at me. Yeah, I'd also fall over and dissolve into a skeleton. Literally! <laughs> that is actually pretty funny, but yeah, same here. I too will turn into a skeleton. If I'm outside, it's swearing at me. Marx and Engels, an episode of you of it. Karl Marx, Friedrich Engels. I don't know who Engels is. But, oh my goodness, they're making ink fan out of historical people that actually existed. I'm. I'm... I'm dying. They should add Bigfoot to War Thunder so I could run him over. They should add Bigfoot to War Thunder so someone will leak classified documents for me to exist. You. Keep talking. Okay, this might have to be the last one. We have been doing this for how long now? 43 minutes. Wow, I have... Been wasting way too much time in this. I had a pot out of hole. A Michigan pot hole is a basically sink hole. Today, I'm going to check engine light came on. I don't have one of those computer plugins to reset the light, and I knew it was just a sensor that got knocked, so I was like, well, we'll, we'll see if this works. And on the way home, I swerved and hit the pothole again, and I checked engine light turned off. Here, Michigan. Oh my goodness. Oh my! What? I just googled Michigan pothole. Is this state okay? No. No, they are not. Alright, that's gonna have to be the end of it. That was some tumbling on r slash tumbler if you couldn't guess. 
If you liked this video, please would like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. So until then, goodbye!